light. We see everything in color these days, don't we? Be it films, programs, advertisements, etc. But did you know that in 1937, Ardashir Irani made the first color film in Hindi? And it was not until the 1950s that color films became popular. Energy from the sun is transferred to the earth by light waves. Light can reach us from the sun and other stars. It can travel through empty space because unlike sound, light does not need a medium to travel through. Light sources give out light and are known as luminous objects. The sun, a candle, a bulb, a tube light are all sources of light and they are either natural or man-made. One can see objects because light falling on these objects is reflected from their surfaces into a person's eyes. Let us look at the laws of reflection. When a ray of light strikes a mirror, the ray is reflected in another direction. A ray of light is an idealization. In reality, we have a narrow beam of light which is made up of several rays. For ease of use, we call a narrow beam of light a ray. The light ray which strikes or falls on any surface is called the incident ray. As you can see here, this is the incident ray. And the ray that comes back from the surface after reflection is known as the reflected ray, which is this one. When the incident ray strikes the mirror at a certain point, which is commonly known as the point of incidence, a line drawn at that point is called as the normal to the reflecting surface, which is this dotted line here. Light from a source like a light bulb reflects off your face and then off the mirror and then enters into your eyes, we call it a reflection. And the image formed is of the same size and of the same color. Now if you move closer to the mirror, the image appears to move closer to you. And if you move away, the image moves away. Now imagine there are parallel rays incident on an irregular surface, something like this. Remember that the laws of reflection are valid at each point of the surface. And by using these laws, if we were to draw the reflected rays of these incident rays, we would see that these rays would reflect in all directions. They would not be parallel to one another. Nearly everything that we see in our surroundings is due to reflected light. Moon, for example, receives light from the sun and reflects it. That's how we see the moon. So the moon is an illuminated object as it shines in the light of another object. Now, here is a question for you. Can reflection work in a sort of a chain reaction? Confused? Okay. Let me rephrase my question. Can the reflected rays be further reflected if incident on another mirror? Let us find out. The periscope makes use of two plane mirrors thereby reflecting a ray of light twice provided the mirrors are placed in such a way. Now this idea of number of images formed by mirrors placed at an angle to one another is used in a kaleidoscope to make numerous beautiful patterns. Two mirrors at an angle will produce lots and lots of images and you can use this rule to make a kaleidoscope. An interesting feature of a kaleidoscope is that you will never see the same pattern again. Designers of wallpapers and fabrics and artists use kaleidoscopes to get ideas for new patterns. Now, do you feel like unleashing your creative side and making your own kaleidoscope? Well, let me show you how you can make one. Take three rectangular mirror strips each about 15 centimeters long and about 4 centimeters wide. Now, join them together to form a prism, something similar to what you can see here. Now comes the designing bit. On this glass plate, place several small pieces of colored glass. 
You could use broken pieces of colored bangles. Close this end of the tube with a round glass plate and keep sufficient space for the colored pieces to move around when you rotate the tube. Voila! Your kaleidoscope is ready. The eye is one of our most important sensory organs. The human eye is an organ which reacts to light and pressure. As a sense organ, the mammalian eye allows vision. Human eyes help provide a three-dimensional moving image normally colored in daylight. Starting with the cornea. This is the outer transparent part of the eye, which is tough enough to protect the interior of the eye from accidents and it is white in color. Next is the iris. Now, iris is a thin circular structure. It works like the shutter of a camera. It controls the amount of light entering the eye. How about some experiments to better understand the workings of the human eye? Just look into your friend's eyes and observe the size of the pupil. Now, take a regular torch. Never use a laser torch for this experiment. Now, throw some light into their eyes and check the pupil now. Now, switch off the torch and observe the pupil again. Did you notice any change in the size of the pupil? Needless to say, the eye is an extremely important organ of the body. The eye is such a wonderful instrument that it can clearly see distant objects as well as objects nearby. The minimum distance at which the eye can see objects distinctly varies with age. And the most comfortable distance at which one can read with a normal eye is about 25 centimeters. Like we take care of our health, we must also take good care of our eyes. Here are a few tips to take care of your eyes. Do not read in too bright or too dim light. Do not look directly at a bright object or at the sun. While reading, do not hold the book too close to your eyes, but don't keep it too far either. First is myopia. This disease is also called short-sightedness or nearsightedness. It leads to difficulty in seeing distant objects. A glass lens or spectacles helps in improving the vision in a myopic person. Next, let us look at what is hypermetropia. Now, a person suffering from this defect finds it difficult to see a nearby object. This disease is also called long-sightedness. Spectacles with suitable lenses can improve the vision in a hypermetropic person. Well, all that was about the human eye. What about the animals? The animal kingdom is so diverse. Are their eyes diverse too? A nocturnal bird like the owl can see very well in the night, but not during the day. On the other hand, birds that are active during the daytime, such as the kite and the eagle, can see well during the day, but not at night. Okay then, that is all for now. And we have completed the chapter on light. Until we meet again, take care and stay curious. Always. Bye-bye. Tutor me for more amazing video lectures. Download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.